What's best in life? I've just googled this question and the top result suggests you to crush your enemies, see them driven before you and to hear the lamentations of their women. While it could be an option, a chess nerd like me can also appreciate a phenomenal game of Mikhail Tal where he played four beautiful sacrifices in one game, leaving Stockfish speechless and let's go ahead and check it out together. Uh, Tal is playing white against all. Tal starts off with the move pawn to e4. Black responds with uh, pawn to c6, the character count defense. By the way, I let Stockfish evaluate moves because it's actually a lot of fun. Let's check it out together. So pawn e4, pawn d5, knight of d2, pawn exchanges. So far, these are just books moves, as Stockfish correctly points this out. Bishop d3, knight to f6. Both players just develop their pieces. So far, so good. In this position, many would be tempted to trade off knights here on f6. Instead, Tal plays a more interesting move, knight to g5. Stockfish is not impressed, says that it's just a book move. Uh, nothing to talk about here. Pawn to h6. A very natural looking move, and yet it's already quite a big error, because white can go forward with their knight to e6. And here's the first move that is considered to be brilliant, because we're sacrificing the knight, and if black captures the knight, that leads to a very sneaky checkmate with bishop to g6 checkmate. A smother checkmate, really cool. Now, black did not overlook this in the real game, so after knight went to e6, black played queen e5, um, retreating the queen with a tempo, check to the white's king, white plays uh, bishop d2, covering the king, black plays back queen to b6. And here Tal played another interesting move. I mean, what would any normal chess player play here? Well, the knight is in danger, probably you'd capture here on f8. Instead, Tal plays knight to f3, and Stockfish once again is amazed, it says that it is a brilliant move. And, uh, well, while knight of 3 is, of course, one of the most standard <laughs> chess opening moves ever, in this particular case, it is quite brilliant indeed, because it also uh, drops this knight on a6. For seemingly no reason, black can just capture it, and it looks like, well, they're just gaining a piece, right? What's the point? Well, the point is bishop to g6, check to the king, and after king to d8, if you look at this position, it is interesting that the compensation that white has here for the sacrificed knight is purely positional. It is the fact that we're blocking black's king side completely. Just think about this. This bishop just can't get out, right? It just can't move at all. So the pawn g7 is blocked, it can't move forward, so you cannot develop the bishop that way, and it cannot be developed along this diagonal because there is this pawn, and in front of it there is another pawn, and black just can't move them, and if you can't get your bishop involved, you cannot bring your rook into the game, etc. So it's quite interesting that white sacrificed the knight not really to checkmate black's king. There is no way for white to do that anytime soon, but just for this positional compensation of blocking black's king side, and that's quite amazing indeed. Uh, now here white castled, black played pawn to c5, and in this position, top played pawn to c4. Um, Stockfish doesn't like it too much, but um, I actually find it quite reasonable. The idea here is, is that it takes away the square d5 from black's knight, so black cannot ever move the knight there and cover the king if there is ever a need for that. So c4 looks reasonable for me. Black capture here, pawn takes d4, and Tyler recaptures, and Stockfish is amazed once again, saying it's a brilliant move. Now, let's look at this for a second. When someone takes your pawn on d4 and you recapture with a knight, that is considered a normal chess move, right? The most standard chess move ever. When Tal plays knight take to d4, there are two exclamation marks. What the heck is going on here? Well, the, the truth is that actually potentially sacrifices this knight. That's the trick. But if black captures the knight over here, that fails to bishop a5, this brilliant discovered check uh, to the king, discovered attack of the queen. So this way white can actually pick up the queen. And for that reason, black did not... Uh, take the bait. Instead, black played some other move. What was that? Pawn to e5. Black is trying to attack this knight on d4 and to, to somehow finally develop his king side. But instead, Tal plays pawn to c5. Once again, not the move we expected. We would probably expect at this point the knight to move somewhere, but instead Tal plays pawn to c5. While Stockfish is not impressed, it says it's just a good move, nothing special. Although, I think that it's still not that simple to find a move like that. What's the trick? Well, if queen takes c5, which didn't happen in the game, that would fail nicely due to knight to e6. And this is not just a fork to the king and queen, this is actually a checkmate. Just look at this. Black's king has nowhere to go. Our bishop is controlling this square, so this would be a very nice, accurate checkmate. Black didn't uh, fall for this trap, he instead took it with the knight, but that failed to another interesting move, bishop a5. Oh my god. Once again, Tal doesn't touch the knight, but instead sacrifices yet another piece. But, well, when Tal plays it, we kind of already expect, right? It becomes trivial that Tal is just giving up his pieces all the way left and right. 
but then somehow wins. Um, well, there was actually a lot of similarity uh, between Tal Games and everyone else. Just everyone else, you know, gives up pieces left and right and then resigns, but Tal somehow wins at the end. That's the only difference. So Bishop A5. Um, now, this time Black has a choice between whether to capture the knight or to capture the bishop, but in both cases they lose. If Queen takes A5, um, actually let me ask you to think about this and to tell me what's the best move. If you can find it, write it down in the comments. How would you play here as white? And uh, in the real game, uh, Black did not play that move. He instead took over here on d4, but then Queen takes d4, check to the king. White is not in a hurry to pick up the queen because anyway, it is checked to the king. Therefore, Black has to cover the king and we can always uh, grab the queen later. Black played knight to d7 and now White grabs the queen recaptures and actually right now white has a queen for three minor pieces which is a normal material balance but black's main problem is their centralized and vulnerable king and an undeveloped position so here white just plays rook to c1 simply bringing his other pieces into play and also the rook is standing pretty nicely here controlling this open file uh, black plays pony five finally black could somehow develop his king side uh, now Tal played queen to c4, getting ready for going inside with queen to c7 check. Uh, Black tried to block it with bishop to c5, but Tal simply plays rook to d1, bringing the last piece into play and opposing it to Black's king. That looks annoying. Black played rook of 8, uh, somehow trying to get the rook involved. I guess it also aims to prevent white from uh, moving the queen forward to f7, starting to attack something there. And here Tal plays pawn b4. Black played bishop to d4, once again trying to cover the line. Stockfish says it's an okay move. And here white play rook takes d4. And black resigns because of an obvious checkmate by the h2 pawn. Well, what? <laughs> of course it's not obvious at all. But when Tal plays it, you can expect things like that. Uh, but it, it is indeed a check made by the h2 pawn, although we probably wouldn't ever expect this. But it's actually a force in line. The rook takes d4, pawn recaptures. Now I can finally break through and start attacking black. So the king is in check, it has to move. Now it follows up with rook to e1, check to the king. Now our bishop is taking away this square, therefore the only move possible in this position is knight to e4. Now white captures that, king goes forward to f6, queen d6. We continue the hunt and after king to g5, uh, the only move that is a checkmate in one is actually this brilliant move pawn to h4. <laughs> so that's how the game could have finished if black didn't resign earlier. And it's a spectacular finish to an absolutely phenomenal game. By the way, let me share here a one quick tip, because pretty often people tell me, Igor, I can only visualize a few moves ahead. How do I develop my visualization skills? Well, let's use this position as an example. Let me uh, take a couple of moves back here, uh, back to this position where white play rook takes d4, which followed with this force in checkmate, okay? So the great idea here for you to uh, practice is practicing visualizing variations you already know. I mean, usually people do it differently. They solve tactical puzzles where you need to find proper moves and visualize moves on the board, right, while calculating those variations. But I, what I suggest is different. You don't try to find the right variation. You already know it. You already know that there's rook takes d4, followed by queen to c7, and then we change the king, and it ends with pawn to h4 checkmate, right? You know the variation already. So your task is just to visualize the variation you already know. And by doing so, you isolate this single skill of visualization. You don't mix it up with anything else. And by keeping focused, that's how you develop your visualization skills in no time. And by the way, if you want to know more about how to learn to calculate variations properly, I've got another course called Calculate Till Mate, which you can find by clicking the link below in the video description, and it teaches you everything you need to know about calculation, visualization, how to develop your tactical vision, and it's all there, basically years of my experience condensed into this one course. And uh, also let me know what you think about this game. Uh, it's interesting that Stockfish even was quite amazed by it, so I hope that you was amazed just as well. Uh, have a great rest of the day. Talk soon. Bye-bye.